We begin, of course, with the Cavaliers and Warriors, specifically J.R. Smith thinking his team was one point ahead when the score was actually even, oh boy. with only 4.7 seconds remaining in regulation. The Cavaliers were toast in overtime and failed to steal a game that was probably essential to challenging the defending champs in this series. Frank, was this a forgivable mistake by one J.R. Smith? No, he has to understand the situation. There's an NBA coach, former coach that you and I know, that was Tony's camp counselor 100 years ago. Well, actually, maybe 200 years ago. Larry <laughs> Brown, that would always talk about score, clock, time. The clock doesn't matter. The shot clock is turned off. You have to know the time, 4.7 seconds, but you also have to know the score. And I like JR. I know his family really well, but for JR to sit there and say he knew that the game was tied, no. why are you grabbing the rebound running all the way to midcourt? That makes absolutely no sense. It's not the reason that they lost but it's a boneheaded play at a crucial moment of the game. Well, it could be. <laughs> it could be the reason they lost. I know he said later Kevin Durant's standing right there, and he's got to put a ball yep. back up. It's not automatic that he scores, but you get a chance, and if you turn around and toss it to LeBron James the way his playoffs have been going, he's going to score. So, so, you know, this is difficult because we say it's unforgivable or not. Magic Johnson, and I, Irvin's going to kill me at some point for bringing this up and inserting his name into this, but – 34 years ago yesterday on the anniversary of May 31st, 1984, Game 2 of the NBA Finals in Boston, Magic dribbled out a clock. It wasn't the exact same situation, but he dribbled it out with 13 seconds left in regulation. Game tied at 113. Lakers lost to the Celtics and lost that series in seven. Now, here's where if Misery likes company, J.R. Smith ought to pick up a phone and call Magic Johnson <laughs> to me the smartest player who ever played yep. and ask him about it. Because you know what happened the next game, Frank? Magic had 21 assists, 21 assists, and a triple-double, and the Lakers won. So there is rebounding from this stuff in some way. There is. JR is going to call you up and thank him and thank you for comparing him to Magic Johnson. I think that maybe he forgot that right before that, Steph Curry converts a three-point play, which puts it on an odd number. That, you know, that gives them the lead right there. The problem with JR is he did a great job grabbing the rebound. You just got to yes. go straight up. You have to know the time. By the way, let's give George Hill. He's an 80% free throw shooter for his career, yeah. Michael. Yeah. He misses the second one. That's, that's a big miss. That's but, as big of a miss as Frank, you're ever going to get. Let me admit that I did the math here. I think this is what JR did. I counted those two free throws as good. And I'm thinking, okay, what happens in the 4.7 seconds left? Golden State has a timeout. Yep. How does Curry get the ball? Who takes the last shot? I was thinking ahead, thinking that's the way to go. I made the bonehead play in the green room because I'd walk from my but seat in the stands to the green room to watch this. And I thought the game was over for the Cavaliers because I had counted the but free you're throws not on, good. But you're not I, on the court, I know, though. But don't you think that that's what J.R. Smith did? Well, he counted the Clarkson free throws as good. That's what I think. Perhaps. But four years ago when he was playing with the Knicks I'm, in I'm Houston, sorry, the, the George the, Hill. The, the game, George Hill free throws. The, the game was tied, and he took a three-pointer when they had the shot clock was reset. There were 20 seconds left. And yeah. after the game, he admitted, I thought we were down by two. So it's not the first time it not has happened first time. with J.R. Smith.